we all know that RPGs are basically collaborative stories of everyone around the table taking these ordinary local bumpkins and turning them into epic, powerful heroes that somehow save the world. But young Balathar, the son of the blacksmith, can't always do that on his own. Sometimes he needs help. And this is where plot armor, or a character shield, comes into effect. Stories wouldn't be really that much fun if the player characters are dying every session or every other session. There's not going to be a continuity to our games. And so we as GMs, sometimes whether we know it or not, actually put this character shield or plot armor on the player characters. We do also do it for villains as well. My name is Mike, and this is the Game Master's Vault. In today's episode, we're going to talk all about plot armor. What is it? Is it good or bad in our role-playing games? I'll give you lots of different examples how we use plot armor in almost every single session that we play. How, who, who or what is causing the plot armor and how to overcome some of the negative effects of plot armor. So, let's go to the vault and see all about plot armor. All right, so there's a lots of different examples of plot armor that I'll go through in just a moment. But basically, if you develop a story when you're first starting your campaign and the players, the player characters, or a specific PC within the party is the only one that can defeat your big bad or the major obstacle to the campaign, you're more likely to give that specific player character or the party plot armor. So. Plot armor normally means that you are doing everything in your power to make sure that they don't die. But I believe that there are different gradients of plot armor and it's not always death that you are saving that particular PC or the whole party from. I think that as a GM, we are using plot armor, whether we know it or not, in every single session that we play. And to prove this, I'm going to give you some examples of common ways that GMs will adjust the game so that the story continues. And sometimes when we adjust things, it may or may not be completely logical. It doesn't always make sense as to why we're doing it, and we have to adjust things on the fly. But it's all to save the story because the particular player character or the party is the only one that can carry out till the end of the story. So, just some examples of how we as GMs use plot armor in almost every session. First of all, um, fudging dice rolls. If you as a GM, your monster is attacking a certain PC and they are hanging on by a thread, they've only got one or two HP left, and you know that pretty much any hit that they take could very easily kill them. And you roll the die, and it's supposed to be a hit, but you tell everybody at the table that it's a miss. That is definite plot armor. You are saving that character. Uh, if the PCs or the party find a uh, chest of loot that has some magical items in it that will help them in the next room against a big bad. They find boots of fire walking, for example, and that will specifically negate some of the attacks of the big bad in the next room. That's plot armor. You're making it easier for the players or that specific PC to survive the attacks and to continue in the story. Um, the PCs are saved from certain death 
from a more powerful NPC or their god or goddess intervenes into a fight that they may be having, um, or if they're out in the wilderness, if the, they're about to succumb to the elements or starvation, and they are saved by a more powerful NPC that they've somehow had an attachment to earlier on in the story, or their god or goddess saves them, that is definitely plot armor. You are saving them from certain death. Sometimes, even if a player character is not on death's doorstep, but they are considered weaker. As a GM, if we have our monster or our villain change their attack from that specific player character to another player character because they may have better AC, they may have higher hit points, or both, just so that they don't kill that one player character. Again, that's, that's plot armor. Um, sometimes we don't always know what things are, are technically called, but that's plot armor. Um, I didn't actually know what the term plot armor meant. I knew what it was, what it did. I just didn't know there was a specific term for it. So um, after doing a little research, yeah, this, this is all, everything is making sense now and it's all coming under one spe specific term. Anyway, um, we can also use plot armor not only to save the PCs, but we can also use it to save villains. If, for example, we have a villain that we have created for our campaign, and this is supposed to be a reoccurring villain, we have to save the villain. We can't let the PCs destroy them until the appropriate time in the storyline that the villain is supposed to die. So the PCs have a villain cornered, and somehow, some way, that villain has a scroll of teleportation and they're gone and the PCs are like what the heck you know we had him cornered we were gonna kill him now he's gone you know that's basically plot armor for your villain which you also um, can use um, also many times uh, if the if the PCs are just routing um, a group of monsters or villains that you have planned for an encounter and they're just wiping the floor with them and it's going to be so quick and ridiculous that it just doesn't make sense from a story standpoint. You need to narratively change that and how you do that is you have more thugs come out from the darkness of the alley and they are a little bigger, they are a little stronger, they are a little nastier, they have a little bit better weapons and they join the fight to make the fight last longer. Again, you're changing the, the encounter, you're changing how things should logically work to the benefit of this story. You're protecting the story. <clears throat> if you as a GM um, nerf or debuff your villain during the game because you, you, you planned your encounter wrong and it's just way too powerful, and this is the exact opposite of the, the last example. And now your big bad guy, your monster, is just decimating your party and you're about to have a TPK. And so if you debuff or you nerf your monster or your villain to give them less hit points, if you um, make it so that they're not using their, their super powerful spells, if they're fighting in some kind of a subpar or illogical manner where it's, they're not taking advantage of everything that's on the stat block, that's the exact opposite of the last uh, example that we gave. Uh, if you hand out inspiration, uh, whether it's tokens or whatever, for good role-playing during your game, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with that. I think that's a good way to encourage role-playing at your table. But if you have a player character and they're making their roll for their final death save, they roll horribly and they turn in one of these inspiration coins to re-roll and make their save, in a sense, that's also plot armor. So, 
Now, some of these examples don't seem so extreme. Some of them could make sense. They could make things a little more fun at the table. It's really not fun having to create a new character every session or every other session just because you did something stupid like falling down a flight of stairs or falling off your horse. Um, it just doesn't make sense. It's not that much fun. From a player standpoint, if you think about it, I think that almost every player is okay with player death, but they want it to be in a heroic fashion. They don't want to die falling off their horse. They want to die saving the town or saving the world from some demon incursion that's going to destroy the world. They want to be the heroes. They want to die epically. If they have to die, they, have to, they want to die epically. They don't want to die doing something stupid. Now, so is plot armor inherently bad or is it good for role-playing games? I would argue it depends on how you use the plot armor during your sessions. To give you a good example of this, my favorite superhero is Batman. Now, if there's a new Batman movie that comes out, I'm going to go to the movie and I'm going to go in there knowing that the likelihood of Batman dying during the movie is between slim and none. Batman is going to survive. Batman is the most integral part of this whole story. Now, they're not going to make a Batman movie where Batman dies 15 minutes into the movie. It's just not going to happen. So, I go to watch this movie knowing that Batman is going to survive. He's going to live. But I'm going to probably enjoy the movie. I'm going to get engrossed into the story, even though I know that Batman is not going to die. If the director and the writers and the actors are doing their job, they're going to portray a good story that creates a lot of tension and conflict and overcoming obstacles. And if they're doing their job really well, I will be sitting there at the edge of my seat thinking this might be the end of Bruce Wayne. But probably not going to happen because Batman's the coolest superhero, right? So using Batman as an example, you can certainly use plot armor in your games and it's not going to completely destroy your games as long as you're using it correctly. Now, if you think about everything that goes on during one of your games, you, as the GM, are the only one that knows everything that's really going on. Your players don't know. When we talked about more thugs coming from out of the alley, your players don't know that that's not what you had planned all along. They just simply don't know that. They don't know how many of an enemy are in this encounter, what kind of spells they're going to use, what kind of weapons they have, all of those kind of things. The players are just there to have fun. So, since they don't know what's really the whole story as a GM, you can adjust your plot armor when and where it's needed during a particular session to either help or hinder the players or the villains um, as you see fit. So the only time where you're really going to run into problems with plot armor is if it is so blatant, so absurd, and so illogical that the player is going to finally figure out that they have plot armor. Once they do, one of two things is going to happen. One, the player is going to say, I'm an idiot. The GM had to save my character because I did things that were so stupid and so reckless. I was so ill-equipped. I rolled so horribly that the GM had to save my character. I need to be better. I need to be more cautious. 
I need to get better armor. I need to not rush into combat situations when uh, that just doesn't make sense, when it's stupid. I need to wait for my fellow party members. I need to make knowledge checks to know what I'm actually fighting, those kind of things. So it can be a learning experience for the player. You can use plot armor as a one-time kind of deal. Um, and either have conversations with the player afterwards, or maybe they'll just figure it out on their own, that the way that they're playing the character is going to be a way that that player, or that character is not going to last very long. Um, the other option that a player may have, if they know that they have plot armor, is I'm invincible. So you may have a paladin who during his night watch, decides that he's going to go all alone into the orc camp and cause problems because he can't die. So then what do you do? We'll talk about that in just a minute. So next we'd like to talk about what actually causes us to have to use plot armor. This is going to be beyond the just bad luck of bad rolls um, for, a, for an evening. Um, these are going to be, like I mentioned before, when you are creating your story and you make the specific player characters, the specific characters that are sitting around your table so integral to the story that they have to be saved. That's partially, that's our fault. We're creating a reason to have to have plot armor. Um, what else did I write in my notes? If you make your encounters either too easy or too hard, you need to get really good about knowing your players and anticipating what they're going to do during an encounter so you can choose the specific traps, hazards, monsters, villains to throw at them to give them a good, solid challenge but it isn't going to be so easy that they walk all over them or too difficult that you're going to get a TPK. So learn how to adjust your encounters based on the players and the player characters that are around your table. Um, another way that you cause plot armor to be necessary is the simple fact that you are controlling all the monsters and the bad guys. So, um, if you haven't subscribed to the Runehammer YouTube channel, go and do that. Um, Hank and Fernell did a, an amazing job of talking about monster AI. And how when we're in an encounter, as the GM, we want it to be a fair fight. So in some of the examples that I listed earlier about nerfing villains or monsters, changing how they're attacking, their tactics, that kind of stuff to a subpar or non-optimal manner, this is exactly what he was talking about in uh, de determining the monster's AI. When you're fighting as the monster, you want it to be a fair fight and you're not going to intentionally try and kill a PC. This is plot armor, but this is that subconscious, you don't know that you're doing it kind of thing. You're going to not attack character A, you're going to attack character B because they're stronger, or you're going to just move and heal as opposed to attacking. So when you control the monsters, that is a prime way of plot armor coming into your games. So how does he say to combat um, this, this player fairness, this counter fairness that he talks about? Um, he says you can get another player to play your bad guys, your monsters. Those are going to be really lethal fights because that person is only there to control the monster for this one session and they're going all out and your party could easily wipe but you're not going to have any way as a GM to provide plot armor for the PCs. You can use dice. You can make a, a list of 
the certain abilities and attacks or whatever that a monster or villain may have, and you roll on that chart, and whatever the dice roll is out in the open for everyone to see, that's the attack that's coming. So that's one way, again, to remove plot armor from an encounter. And the fourth way, um, you really have to go watch this video because it's really amazing how he talks about this, but you actually create a flow chart knowing what the the certain attacks and spells and everything that this monster has, you create this flow chart to go and you follow this flow chart and whatever the flow chart says, that's what is going to happen. And it's a logical way of doing everything. Does the monster notice the, the PCs? Is the hurt? Is the monster at advantage or disadvantage? Um, looking at the, the encounter setup. Are they going to run and heal? Are they going to attack and, and make everything specific and follow it to AT? And hopefully if your players are good enough, they will see this sequence and they will be able to anticipate when's the right time to attack this particular monster. So those are just some ways to try and cut out plot armor if you decide that you want to cut plot armor out of your games. Um, those are the causes um, of why plot armor creeps into our games knowingly or subconsciously. So how do we as GMs overcome plot armor that has come into our games? I think there's three things that we need to look at and how as GMs we can adjust the game to mitigate or eliminate plot armor if we want to do that. Um, the first of all is we have to be flexible. We need to determine who, what, when, where, how, and why we are using plot armor. We need to do it more consciously as opposed to subconsciously. Um, we don't give plot armor to the red shirts for example, if you're playing a Star Trek game. But that doesn't mean you have to kill them every single time. So sometimes you can give a, a PC some plot armor, sometimes you don't. Um, whether you're talking about flexibility, um, a lot of times during the first few sessions maybe um, that you play in a new campaign, the GM will basically say, your party can't die in the first three sessions. After that, you're fair game, but for the first three sessions, I'm not going to have you die from a sewer rat bite. I'm not going to have you die from falling off the horse or falling down a set of stairs. That's, that's just stupid. But after those first three sessions, you're fair game, and your character could easily die. So that's a little bit of flexibility. So also when talking about flexibility, what happens if your player character does something incredibly stupid against the advice of everyone at the table, you as the GM and all the other players tell this player, don't do this, that's stupid. They do it anyway, they fail, and they're going to die. If they're going to be that incredibly stupid, let them die. Don't let plot armor help that particular character. They have to, they have to learn, and sometimes you have to let them die. So they can always create a new character, whatever, and you would have to adapt your plot, your story, and whatnot, your character arcs, all of that to compensate for the utter stupidity of that particular player. So the second way of overcoming some of the ways that we add plot armor is to prioritize uh, the plot armor itself. Now, plot armor is primarily used to avoid death, but there are certain other things that can easily happen during a campaign that may or may not require plot armor. So Batman, for example, um, we know that Batman can't die, but what about one of um, his, his NPCs, his important NPCs in the story? 
What about Alfred? Everybody loves Alfred, but what if, if the villain started to do something to put Alfred at risk? Or Rachel, or Vicki Vale, or Robin? Nobody says they can't be killed or harmed in some way. So in our games, what about um, curses? What happens? Okay, you say that the player is not going to die, but what happens if they um, get bitten by a werewolf and come down with lycanthropy? So now that they're a werewolf, what if they lose limbs? What if their, their significant other or their parents or whatever are kidnapped? I think it's very, very cool for villains to use psychological warfare against the heroes of the story. So in our case, the heroes of the story, of course, is the party, and the villain needs to find out what the party values the most and take it away from them. So earlier we talked about not only Batman, but we also talked about the games can still be fun even if there is plot armor. And so this is exactly what we're just talking about. We can still build tension. We can still build conflict inside of our games, even with plot armor, even with the, the PC knowing that, yeah, they're probably, the likelihood of them dying is very, very slim, but we can still make it torturous. We can still watch them grow. It's just like in the Batman movie when um, Rachel is taken by Two-Face and strapped to a bunch of bombs and, and Batman has to make this incredibly difficult moral choice to save Rachel or to save Gotham. So now the final thing that we're going to talk about to overcoming plot armor um, or how we deal with this is improvisation. When you are developing an encounter, it's very good to just take a brief moment and especially if you've played for a little while with your group to say, what would they do? What's the most likely thing that, that they're going to do? Well, they're going to try and talk to the bad guy first. They're going to not just rush right into combat. Um, or they're going to try and be sneaky, they're going to plot everything out, they're going to plan, um, all of those kind of things as to knowing how your players will probably respond to a specific encounter. Now, when you're developing an encounter and you know how the players are going to react, you can use that information to think about how you may have to adapt your story based on their actions. It's, it's thinking two steps ahead of them. So Guy, in, the, in one of the videos on the How to Be a Great GM page, um, he talks about plot armor briefly when he says that in his world, orcs do not take prisoners. Orcs are, you know, they're very hostile and they will just kill you. They will not take prisoners. So when you have a player character or a whole party with plot armor and they don't do any planning or anything and they rush into the orc tribe's camp and you use plot armor to save them, they get knocked out, they get captured, they get tied up, put in an orc tent. But orcs don't do that. You've already told the players that orcs do not take prisoners. So now you need to quickly think about how you're going to fit this into the story to make it a little more believable. So I've come up with a few different examples of, of how to handle that kind of situation. Um, the first, perhaps the orc chieftain is kind of infatuated with one of the party members and wants to marry her and bring her into the tribe. And he knows that if he kills all of her friends, then she's not going to be very receptive to willingly marrying him. 
So he's going to save the whole party from death. He'll capture them all, but he's not going to kill them all. That would be one way of adapting or improvising that kind of situation. Um, perhaps there is a huge bounty on the party's heads, and the orcs were hired to bring the party back alive. So because the money is so great, they're willing to bend their own social norms and take this party alive to return them back to the evil wizard or whatever. And the third thing is perhaps there is no reason why the orcs took them alive. Or, or at least the players will never know the reason. But now it's providing conflict within the orc tribe that the chieftain um, took you guys, the players, as prisoners and so now the rest of the orc tribe is like, Grognard took prisoners. Grognard is not fit to lead the De Red Death Clan. And so that's going to probably provide a really good way for your players to get out of there and to escape the orc, orc camp. So those are some basic ideas and thoughts that I had on plot armor. There's probably, you can probably talk for a lot longer on plot armor. Um, whether you use it, whether you don't use it, whether you know you use it or don't know you use it. Um, I still think that it, it comes up in, in almost every single game, every single session that we play. You're using some form of plot armor, whether you know it or not. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. It just depends on how your players take it, if it is something that is so blatant that they now know that they have plot armor. How to avoid getting plot armor in the first place? Um, think about your stories ahead of time. Don't make those specific PCs so integral to your story that they have to survive. Um, that will make your games a little grittier, a little more realistic. Um, so, let me know what you think about plot armor down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, we might even do a, an additional add-on video or something where we talk about some of these other topics that you might bring up. Uh, if you like this episode, hit the like button down below, click the little subscribe button and the little dingy bell so you know when I come out with new videos. And that's all we've got from the Game Master's Vault today. Stay tuned for the next episode. All right, so that was a pretty long video on how we as GMs basically save our PCs from dying, and that's what I got. So now I think I'm going to go and uh, turn all my furniture into mimics. So see you, nerds.